despite the fact I love the story of Alice in Wonderland and I loved the 1951 animation when I was growing up, I hadn't actually seen it in a really long time. So I decided to give it another watch, the first time I've seen it as an adult. And I could remember quite a lot of it. I could remember obviously the iconic scenes, the croquet, the painting the roses red, the unbirthday party. But there were a lot of aspects of this that I couldn't remember. And I have to say it's one of the most imaginative and childlike films Disney has ever created. And if you haven't seen it in a long time, I definitely recommend you watch it through an adult lens because I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. So, as I said, this was released in 1951, directed by three Disney greats, Clyde Geronimi, Wilfred Jackson, and Hamilton Luske. And the voice cast is brilliant. Catherine Beaumont voices Alice herself. And the actual how Alice goes down the rabbit hole, um, there will be spoilers here. I'm going to spoil the narrative because I'm going to talk about certain things, but I'm assuming you're familiar with the story. So when Alice goes down the rabbit hole, it's quite clear that she has been dreaming. Even straight away, it's quite clear that she's dreaming. I prefer it with later films, and I can't remember how it happens in the book. Um, I don't know if I've ever actually read the book all the way through, but I like it when it's not really actually... That when we don't think it's a dream, when we just think it's the new reality. But when she goes down the rabbit hole, obviously she has the whole eat me, drink me thing, which I always think is a really dodgy thing in this story, because young children watching that would quite easily pick up anything that says eat me and drink me and, and consume it. And that's the only problem I have, even with, even with Tim Burton. Tim Burton is my hero. I love him more than life. But even with his version of it, I think maybe there needs to be a more obvious message with that aspect of it and the fact that you shouldn't just eat anything that says eat me. But after that, the rest of the film is pretty safe. And obviously I'm not going to go scene by scene explaining the narrative, but what I will say is we meet a lot of characters in this who don't ever really appear in later interpretations. I am referring um, to the Dodo. We do occasionally meet the Dodo in other versions. Um, but there's a whole sequence in this just before we meet the caterpillar that's quite unique to this film and obviously the original narrative. And I don't know why other adaptations don't focus on those aspects, but maybe because I didn't have that emotional connection, I just didn't find it all that interesting, those certain aspects of it. But once once Tweedledum and Tweedledee stopped reciting the walrus and the carpenter, and we got to the caterpillar, and then we ma met the mad hare, the mad hare, the march hare, and the mad hatter, and then, of course, the queen of hearts. Everything was recognisable, it was beautiful, it sparked memories. I love the animation design of the queen of hearts. She's not one of my favourite Disney villains. Um, Helena, Helena Bonham Carter, of course, her Erasabeth, queen of hearts, is one of my favourite Disney villains. But this animation one isn't. But I love the design of her. And the same with the Mad Hatter. The green outfit looks perfect. In fact, the animation here, there's something about the animation of all of the characters that just looks disturbing, almost. Apart from the White Rabbit. I'd say the White Rabbit looks like what a White Rabbit in a waistcoat with a pocket watch would look like. The rest of them, you kind of have to take a step back and think... Is that what I would have drawn that creature to look like? If somebody said, draw, draw a March Hare, draw two twins. Usually these are not what we would draw. So I think it's very creative, very imaginative. Kind of looks like the original illustrations to a reasonable degree. Certainly they're very recognisable. With regards to the soundtrack, I could only remember Painting the Roses Red. And having watched it now, that is still the only song that kind of sticks in my head. Um, obviously the on birthday song as well, but I do love painting the roses red. And I think the Red Queen, as the narrative progresses, makes this um, just all the more exciting for me. There is a bit of kind of intensity. I didn't know how Alice was going to leave Wonderland. Wait, did they ever mention the name that it was Wonderland? I'm sure they did. I can't remember it, but I'm sure at some point they would have referred to Wonderland. 
but I didn't know how she was going to get out of Wonderland. I wasn't sure what would happen or how this narrative would conclude itself compared to other versions. So I thought it was quite exciting. What makes it... <laughs> there are two things I love in this. One is the fact that it just completely lets go of all common sense and just throws the towel in and says, let's, let's just make this as mental as we can and as mad and crazy and fun as we can. And it does that very well. But there's also one lie in this. And I don't know if this is directly from the book or if it was written into the film, but Alice says something along the lines of, stop with this nonsense. And a lot of nonsense happens after that. But it really shows that you may want to live in a world of nonsense, as Alice did, where there are no rules and you don't have to do your history lesson. But sometimes you need order, you need sense, you need logic and routine. If you just have this level of nonsense, you start to lose your mind a little bit. It's obviously a lot of fun. I think it takes Lewis Carroll's story and makes an absolutely fantastic version of it. It's not my favourite. There, there's another version with, um, I can't remember who, is, who else is in it, but the Tweedles are played by George Wendt and Robbie Coltrane. And that's a really brilliant version. Obviously, Tim Burton's version is always going to be my favourite. But if you haven't seen this, well, if you've never seen this, I absolutely recommend it. But if you haven't seen it in a long time, since you were a child, definitely give it a watch. Give it a watch through an adult's lens. I think you'll find it to be quite a different experience to what it was when you were a child. But certainly I'm glad I've rewatched it. It's disturbing in some ways, but ultimately a lot of fun. <laughs>